am back and welcome to a what I'm currently reading video. I do these weekly so I can kind of check in and tell you what I'm reading as I randomly decide to pick stuff up because library holds tend to come in around my current reads. I don't actually surprisingly have too much to juggle at the moment but it is the start of a week so that could change but I'm continuing my reread of The Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. I've still got 15 hours left of the audiobook reading these books because they're a thousand pages long. It's like the equivalent of reading three different normal length books so that feels a little bit insane to me. I'm still loving it but I'm just I don't know if annoyed is the right word but I'm annoyed that it's taking me so long because this has been in so many currently reading videos but it's so long so of course it's gonna take me longer to read. So I think I should kind of try and go easy on myself but I really want to finish this so maybe when I finish my other current read I can alternate between reading this physically and on audiobook and that might speed things up a little bit but it depends on what else comes up during the week. So the other thing that I am reading is one of my anticipated releases and that is The Pairing by Casey McQuiston and I am really enjoying myself. Now this one is about two guys who are childhood best friends. For a while they were dating and they were lovers. Since then they have broken up and they're now estranged exes and when they were still together they booked this trip through Europe for food and wine tastings but because they broke up they never went on the trip and they've put off going on the trip and they've redeemed the trip for the past couple of years so it never expired but because it's getting close to their last redemption they can't do it again. They both by chance end up booking the trip and going together but separately. They both appear on the two of us and then realize the other one has had the same idea. So now we are looking into rekindling potentially their relationship and they're getting back to becoming friends again and I'm like a hundred ish pages in so far and I'm loving it but not as much as Red White and Royal Blue and I think because this breakup seems to have hinged on a miscommunication and an overreaction and those are just two things in romance that I personally hate. So I'm hoping that these characters get to a point where they can trust each other and then maybe their fallout or I mean their new fallout you know that third act breakup kind of thing maybe that is them realizing that they broke up because of a miscommunication but we'll see what happens. I'm enjoying it so far and it's making me want to travel again because they're going all through France and Italy and Spain and those are the places that I went on my honeymoon so to kind of relive it through them eating a lot of food and drinking a lot of wine is making me nostalgic so I'm enjoying myself like I said. At the moment it's probably sitting at a four stars but we'll see what happens as it progresses. It has potential to grow. So these are really my two priorities for the moment and I don't actually surprisingly have any library hall waiting for me. That is quite surprising and it gives me room on audio to finish this ASAP. So this is my priority. I don't know if that's going to change but you know knowing me usually things do so we'll see what happens when I next update you in this video. It's the end of the week now and I have only read this book basically all week. I finished it last night and I think I've got mixed feelings about it but I'm not really sure why or how because when I rationalize them they're not necessarily bad feelings they're just misaligned with how this was presented. I say that because in the beginning I was describing this as a male male romance and it seems like it was marketed in a similar vein to Red White and Royal Blue but this is completely different. I don't consider this a spoiler because it is the gender of one of the protagonists but Theo is non-binary and we also got a perspective shift in this so you get to hear from both perspectives of the love interest which is great but it also meant that when we saw from Kit's perspective he was talking about Theo as she they I was very confused because it was almost deliberate in that it didn't reveal Theo as not being male in the first chunk of the book when we were in Theo's perspective so I felt confused by this initially and then I had to realign my expectations and while I was doing Doing that the story was feeling very nostalgic and it had a sad undertone because these characters are almost grieving the fact that they haven't had this time together and they parted so badly. There's a lot of water under this bridge that they need to process. So it was a fantastic book in the sense of it being a character study and a story arc and a journey. Like I feel like I know these characters. So this book succeeded in building a story and building these characters but I don't feel like it was a rom-com really. To be fair it did have levity at the beginning and you know peppered through it in different dialogue so at some points I did laugh so it was humorous at times but the overarching feeling I got from this was melancholy and I think I would have finished this a lot faster if it was in a similar vein or category as Red White and Royal Blue which was mostly just romance and smut and a fun time whereas this was you know it had those things in it but yeah it was much more miserable. Not miserable but I don't know it just had a different feel to it and I think if you don't know that about this book and then you go into it you're going to be blindsided and I feel like I was very much blindsided. I mean I still gave it a four stars but I 
definitely didn't love it as much as Casey McQuiston's other book. I know I shouldn't necessarily compare them because they are very different forms of art. It still feels like I can because they're by the same author and they were marketed very similar. So I guess what I'm saying is I feel like this could have had a different blurb and that would have set me up correctly to go into this, but I still appreciated it and enjoyed it. Looking back, I probably should have read this before Brother Song because I consider Brother Song now one of my favorite reads in general of all time. Like I cried 12 times reading that book and then to read this after it because they were both two anticipated releases of mine, it felt a bit almost not lackluster, but it felt like it missed the mark a little bit. So if I read them the other way around, I think I would have had a bit of a better time because I'm fighting against a book hangover from reading a favorite book of all time. I just feel a bit unmoored now. Like Dave's reading my Kindle because he's reading The Will of the Many, which I fully support because I love that book. But I also want to read some of my other eBooks on there. Like I want to continue reading The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. I got 39% into that book as well. And then I'm reading technically The Words of Radiance and I don't have it right with me to hold up, but you know what the book is. And I've got 11 hours of the audiobook left. So I need to really bullet on finishing that book because we got a cover reveal for The Knights of Wind and Truth, which is the fifth book in the Stormlight Archive. So that's made me realize that there's what, 100 or 99 days until that release. So I really need to hurry up on my reread. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I also got requests from my library like, oh, hey, we've got this audiobook. And that happened four times this week with various books. And I put all of them off because I was like, mm, I don't feel like nonfiction right now, or I don't feel like this story right now. So this book has put me in a really weird reading mood and I hope that my love of Stormlight Archive or Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archive can pull me back out of it. Because if I wasn't reading that at the same time as I'd finished this, I think I'd be in a bit of a reading slump slash hangover right now. But anyway, this week of reading was a bit of a weird vibe, but overall enjoyable, I guess. And yeah, that's all I have to say. So thank you so much for watching this video. Come chat to me down below in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.